All right. Well, welcome everybody to whatever we're calling this it, chat with the AD, coach chat with the AD. But hopefully, it gives you some insight into what our coaches have been doing and what our staff has been doing during the COVID 19 shutdown here. Uh, so, we've got some of our coaches here. We've got Charity Elliott from women's basketball, Tom Lloyd from men's tennis, Sammy Ward from softball and Augustine Moreno from women's tennis. And I'll kind of start with our, our spring sports. We've got two tennis and a, a softball. Your season was just kind of abruptly ended uh, just like that. And, and obviously went from, well, we might resume again to completely shut down and, and done for the year. So maybe uh, I'll start with Tom. How, what happened and, and how did that, how did that feel? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was definitely, definitely abrupt and sudden. We were actually in the van on our way to Fresno, California to play uh, two teams, one of which was an Ivy League team that had already uh, pulled the cord, and then um, the other was uh, the hosting team, Fresno State. So we got to just past Magic Mountain, and the, the cord was pulled. So we, uh, we pulled off and kind of gathered the troops and said, this is pretty much it. And it, it really, really didn't set in until we actually started to drive back drive back home unloaded uh, right out in the parking lot there at Gersten. And then, uh, you know, guys were kind of looking for direction, whatever. And it was, it was tough just saying, you know, I'll be in touch. And then, you know, fast forward to now, here we are almost what two, God, has it been two weeks, two weeks later? And um, we're just kind of taking it day by day. So, I mean, the, the one thing to take, as I keep telling the guys is that we're not the only, only team or only people going through this. This is all over the entire world. So, um, but yeah, definitely abrupt and sudden and, you know, people looking for answers and just uh, trying to trying to hold fort and, and, and be as, uh, as strong as we can for all these student athletes. And Sammy, you had an interesting aspect because we had actually canceled the tournament that we were going to play in the night before. So Wednesday night, we canceled the tournament based on you know, information that we had at that point and also the fact that a couple of teams were not really interested in traveling because Wednesday night, if you remember, was when everything happened with the NBA. So things really accelerated really quickly. What was that like maybe Thursday morning? Wednesday night, obviously, it happened pretty late. So what was Thursday morning like? Um, it was – I mean, we were still in that wait-and-see mode. We thought we had just canceled the tournament. We told the team that they could have a weekend off and that we would plan on – being back Monday to get back after it for the next weekend. And then the next day it all unfolded that the NCAA had come down with their decision to cancel the spring championships. And I mean, it was super surprising, but I mean, we understand, I mean, this is all so much bigger than we are. And I feel like being athletes, we almost have the advantage in situations like this because we're used to training for adversity and for the unexpected, but still surprising, still hurt a lot of the athletes and stuff, but I think they have a good understanding of the big picture on things. So I think there's just a lot of questions now on how we move forward. And Augustine, for, for you, you obviously we're off to a great start. Uh, one of the best starts in school history in women's tennis and, and certainly poised to participate in potentially postseason play uh, in the NCAA tournament. So what was kind of walk us through what it was like for your team? Well, um, when we got back from um, Santa Barbara, beating Santa Barbara, which had beaten like a couple of days before uh, San Diego, that San Diego is was ranked pretty high and and was probably you know one of the top in in our in our conference. And obviously, we um, it didn't. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. We were going to have uh, we were going to play SMU. And you canceled, but it wasn't. It was because of the weather. It was gonna, the rain was gonna come, and so all oh my girls were kind of like, "Where are we?" You know. And three days later, I think it was a Wednesday. That's right. Um, everything got canceled or Thursday, and uh, obviously all my girls, you know, didn't know where. A lot are international. They didn't know where to go. You know, I started like taking them, you know, to the airport and obviously being very careful. Some didn't even have a mask to travel, you know. Um, 
uh, that I guess everything, uh, I mean, they're all nice and safe. I know that. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I mean, I guess we're pretty lucky in, in, in some ways, you know, so. Yeah, I know you're right, Augustine. I think the, the complicating factor in all over to charity was the fact that for those sports that weren't in session, we, we happened to be on spring break in that particular week. So charity, your season was over. You know, we had finished postseason play uh, with the WCC tournament. And so now we're on spring break and you've got students scattered a little bit, maybe still on back from the WCC tournament, but some of them had already made the decision to go home to take a little bit of break from basketball anyway, because they're on spring break. What, how did you notify your team and, and what was that like for a team that was, had just finished up? Yeah, certainly um, a very different, you know, situation than, than the spring, spring sports we're going through. We did have most of our players that had gone home. Um, and, and so it was really just, hey, we're finding things out very um, slowly, but it wasn't affecting our team, you know, in the moment as much as it was affecting, you know, so many others. So um, it was just a matter of, of, you know, texting, keeping everybody updated on what was happening, making sure, um, you know, where everybody was, you know, what their plans were, you know, okay, now it's all moving to online classes. Um, you know, okay, okay, okay. Here's the plan. We're still planning on being back here, um, you know, at some point to start up workouts again. So just everything was very much up in the air. Um, and, and you know, it, it just was a daily, okay, here's our update today, but it could change tomorrow. So this is what we're doing. Um, you know, and just really making sure we stayed in touch with where everybody was and that everybody was safe and their families were good. And, and let's go to that point. How is everybody doing, uh, I guess, in your own household? And uh, I'm sure you're probably figuring out all kinds of different things to do. Uh, but how is everybody in your own household? And then how are your student athletes? And I'll, I'll kick that to anybody who wants to take themselves off mute at this point. Well, uh, I'll start with uh, family. It's been quite, uh, quite interesting as I've used the analogy of it's almost, if anyone's seen the movie Billy Madison, we're back to uh, going through school all over again. So it's been, it's been very humbling because I realized that I'm not as smart as a third grader um, and uh, having to uh, pick up the curriculum and teach and do all that and keep your cool. So learn a new element of uh, maybe how I'm going to be acting on the sideline coming in the next year. Um, but, you know, it's been great as far as that aspect as, as coaches, we don't really use this, get this time of the year as far as spring sports go to spend with our family. Um, so it, it's been great in that aspect. Uh, our daughter who's in third grade, it's been really an addition to her curriculum and stuff is added to our routine in the house. So that's been, that's been nice. And you go back to as we are as, as once we were athletes and how much athletes rely and like routine so me as a coach and a past athlete and and also the way that we were living in the spring sports where we're very much routine based so that that's been a blessing in disguise as much as i don't like third grade math um but then the uh the 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 added factor in our household is our our four our four-year-old uh thomas that kind of runs around and has zero routine or zero care for for anything and that's been the uh he's like the agitator in the middle of the washing machine. That's just kind of, you kind of just have to make do with it. So one of us will grab him and take him out, wrangle him somewhere while we can get homework done. And then uh, hopefully, hopefully come back to uh, ground zero, but it's, it's been a challenge, but a uh, bit fun at the same time. Well, and, and for those of you that are, are tuning in that no LT, uh, he has, a really, really high motor for a four-year-old. That's a scouting report on LT. And he probably would fit into that category very similar, and no offense, Tom, to a dog where you need to take LT out for walks every so often just to get him out of the house. Is, is yeah, my guess. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's 6.30 a.m. till now since there's pretty much no bedtime. Uh, is <laughs> He's just, he, he's stoked. He knows. So he's pushing the boundaries even more than before. And there's really little... You can't take them to the park. You can't take them to the beach. You're literally like, you know, headbutting walls here. So you try to just kind of figure out and all right, man, where do you want to go? You just go walk the streets. 
silver lining in, in all this is LT is loving what is going on right now because he gets to spend more time with everybody and, and agitate as much as he can. Pumped. Yeah. How about you? How how about how about you, Augustine? How's everything there? Well, for me, it's Are your kids back home different. or no? No, my my one kid is well. They they they're both in LSU, Louisiana. Yep. Well, one is um, went to train to Cancun, Mexico, um, with a tennis academy in Mexico. They haven't closed it um, really as much as here. There's not many cases, maybe because of the weather. I have no idea. So um, there's actually a lot of people training around the world, uh, around the Cancun area, because there's a lot of um, small tournaments in there. Um, internationally, I mean, they're obviously they're not playing them yet, but as soon as they let them play, they're going to play down there. So, but he's in an academy which there are only like five, six kids. You know, he's taking his precautions and know that the, my other kid is in in Louisiana. I think New Orleans is really bad. It's like one of the worst places, but he's in Baton Rouge, so it's not like so for him, I guess, in that area. And I haven't touched a living thing in more than 15 days. Not even <laughs> I don't have a talk. I don't have anything, you know. I'm trying to see if I have an ant around here or something, you know. But well, you know. That's good. It sounds like you're staying pretty safe, safe yourself. Then that, that's a good thing. How, how oh, about yeah. you, Sammy? You, how about you, Sammy? You, you've got two young daughters, and I'm sure they're happy that mom and dad are home uh, because, you know, with your your husband being an assistant coach, obviously uh, when you go away for a a, a road trip, uh, I think your mom usually comes down to watch watch the kids. So what has it been like for them to have mom and dad both home? Well, I think it has been definitely the silver lining, but very similar to um, what Tom was saying. I mean, trying to work with uh, our nine-year-old on her third grade math as well. I mean, having to Google out everything. So it's really embarrassing. I've been stumped several times with Common Core, but it's uh, put me in a position to grow as well. So that's been nice. And it's so funny because, I mean, they're doing so many things academically that I don't think we did in third grade but luckily she doesn't understand Google yet so I got the one step up on her on that one so she's a little smarter than I am which is nice but um yeah that, that that's a pro tip uh pro tip if you're helping kids with homework you know I, I do have four kids and uh, I remember the fifth grade math problem a, a while ago that I couldn't solve and it actually it was computerized and so every time you got it wrong you had to go backward and I think I mean I was up way past my son's bedtime at the time just trying to help him mm -hmm. solve a fifth grade math problem and so I completely understand and, and yeah you have to google sometimes just to kind of cheat and find the right <laughs> answer instead of doing it yourself yes exactly so but that's it's been nice to spend time with them I mean like you had mentioned we have never had a spring with them so I mean it's something totally different totally out of the norm it was uncomfortable at first but it's been nice I think the biggest challenge is just uh, being there for them and helping them with what they need to grow and um, continuing to uphold our responsibilities. So, I mean, it's pretty much what we do in season anyway, but now we have the face to face, so we can't quite put our children on hold the same way that we normally do. But in terms of the team, the things that I think um, that I found to be really interesting when I asked them what some of their biggest struggles are, of course, they all said the routine. I mean, just as I mentioned, we are creatures of habit, we're creatures of routine and as athletes, our routine is absolutely set for us in terms of practice time, study time, and class time. Um, but I think the biggest thing that I thought was interesting and very relatable is some of the girls were saying that their biggest challenge is staying off of their phone. They find that their screen time is up so high right now, and they're like, what am I doing with my life? I'm just wasting it away on Instagram. Nothing new is happening there, but I'm still just staring at it. Yeah, no, definitely. I think during this time, uh, the one thing I've noticed is you do miss that face-to-face -face interaction. And unfortunately, you can use your phone more often or use technology. And, and in fact, uh, maybe it's because you get sick of talking with people in your own house at times, too. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, Charity, you obviously are, again, a, a husband-wife team. So Chris is, is one of our assistant coaches with women's basketball. And you've used this opportunity because it would normally be a time where you're out recruiting kind of use it to your advantage from a recruiting perspective 
what have you been able to do that's unique without giving away your secret? Cause we don't want other coaches to tune in right. and, and copy what you're doing, but how have you been able to recruit during this time? And in fact, uh, have, have some people that have perhaps, cause I don't want to break a, a rule verbally committed to you. Yeah. Perhaps. It's been, you know, we, we, I, I, uh, when you were talking about likening Tom's son to a dog, we have a Jack Russell that literally is driving us insane. So I, I'm not having to deal with third grade math, which I'm really, really grateful for. But, um, but our dog is like, this is too much. Like he's got to, like, we got to walk every other minute. Um, so in, in light of keeping him in, uh, uh, you know, tired, um, we have really, we, it's been interesting to kind of see how we can take advantage of this time and, you know, normally we would be doing home visits with juniors right now um, in their home, traveling, going all over the place. So we've just tried to be creative and we're still trying to, uh, you know, make that happen. And we've, we've done that and had some really tremendous um, experiences with recruits and their families. And obviously it's not the same as being in their house, um, but we've been able to kind of replicate um, what we would do if we were there, the presentation that we would do. Um, and, and they've gone really, really well. And yeah, we've had some good news in our program and, um, you know, hoping for even some, some more good news. Um, but it's just, you know, it's really, really created an opportunity as I think Sammy or you all were talking about just to grow and to step outside of your comfort zone and to be creative. Um, you know, and, and my staff, I think, has done a remarkable job of how can we stay connected with these recruits right now who, who are going through a really, really challenging time of uncertainty. And, you know, normally for women's basketball, they would be playing in two evaluation weekends. Um, and because they're not having that opportunity, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear in their world right now of, am I going to lose out on opportunity? So, we're trying to just bring some calmness, some reassurance. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a really really fun time actually. How have you been able to charity? How have you been able to stay in contact with your team? You, you know, you and and three of our, the four coaches we have on have international student athletes who are are back. Some of them in their home countries. Some of them still here. How have you been able to kind of stay in contact? with everyone and, and adjust all the different calendars all over the world. Right. Um, we are, our international uh, players have actually are still on campus um, in their own rooms and, and kind of isolated, but they're here. There was a big fear of going home and then when would they be able to come back into the country? Um, so, so, you know, there, the, what we've done is, is really just try to, stay really connected with our team through Zoom, you know, meetings, through, um, you know, giving them some things to watch, some documentaries, some YouTube, some, some things, and then to try to just keep dialogue happening. Um, uh, I had individual meetings with them on Zoom last week. Um, you know, just doing what we can. It's the best we can do. And, and I, I, my staff, again, has just done a great job of uh, also just really trying to be intentional of, reaching out to them. And even though, you know, Zoom is not the same or uh, this is not the same as being in the same room, it's still reassuring when you see someone's face. And I was just, I was so pumped last week when we had our first team meeting because all their faces pop up and, you know, everybody's happy, excited, and it, we have to do what we have to do right now. What about you, Augustine? How many of your student athletes went home uh, are they still here in the states? Where where kind of is everybody right uh, now? What, the only there's, I only have one international student there at, at the dorms, and um, you know she's from Spain, and Spain was hit severely hard. You know, actually the other Spanish went back home, and uh, well, I mean we've we the same way. I mean we are we know we have a online class in yoga, which is huge. For, for being inside, you know, so they, they are always taking that online class. Um, Jordan has been helping a lot too with videos um, for fitness, you know, and so, I mean, we try to send, 
whatever I find on the internet that is, you know, that is good for tennis, I try to send it, you know, whatever I find. I mean, I always get from a lot of ex-tennis players posts and, and videos and just little, you know, whatever helps. You know? so that's it. I mean, that's all I can do. And recruiting, it's a little bit, it's, it's been good actually. Um, but I don't know if you're going to get back into that recruiting. So, Oh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on recruiting okay. a, a little right. bit, but we'll, we'll get back there. No, you're, you're following the script really well, Augustine. That's good. You're, you're paying yeah. attention. That's, that's awesome. How about you, Tom? Do you have uh, some student athletes that maybe went home or where are they kind of scattered right now? Yeah, I mean, we had, we had one guy that got a bit, a bit scared right at the beginning. And uh, for all obvious reasons, his parents were um, kind of scared as well, which is totally understandable. And he was from uh, Guadalajara. So he left, um, you know, shortly after we came back from Fresno State because of kind of the mass hysteria. So he's back and safe and so forth. And you know, we've got a guy from um, a guy from Chile, a guy from Germany um, that stayed here. Um, the cool thing is, you know, we are in season, and our group of guys and our culture is, you know, they, with the exception of maybe their freshman year, they all live with each other, whether it's on campus or off campus. Two of the guys, there's two different places, you know, maybe two streets away from me here in the neighborhood in Westchester where they have a house, so they're all pretty close knit, taking care of each other and checking in and that goes with, you know, the, the, the guy, you know, foreign. And also we have a lot of guys from California uh, that maybe just went home to whether it's, you know, Woodland Hills or Long Beach and so forth. But um, most of my guys, 99% of them are still right here, um, you know, trying to train on a private court or something like that and uh, utilizing, you know, their areas for, for fitness and stuff like that. And, you know, they have their own little chat group going outside of the one where the coaches are included. And they're all kind of keeping tabs on each other and making sure everyone's doing well and so forth. And we're fortunate to have that with our guys. And, you know, and that's kind of what the spring semester is about. These guys, we pretty much live on top of each other for three and a half months. So they've kind of, because of the routine and what they're used to doing, they've, they've kind of kept, they've kept that up on their own, which is, you know, reassuring. You know, we haven't done a Zoom meeting yet. Uh, the guys have been asking and stuff like that. We're going to have our first one tomorrow with academics as registrations come up. Um, but, you know, the guys all, you know, kind of pepper each other with stuff just as it is as if we were still in season. So the trash talking hasn't stopped. And so it's been kind of just fun to just kind of sit back and, and watch. And, and Sammy, you have a, obviously a, a roster that's pretty heavy California. Uh, so I would assume that, most most of your students went home yeah most of them went home we have uh, two that opted to stay on campus they just felt that it would be more beneficial for them to stay in a routine and get ahead in their academics so I applaud them for making that tough decision it's hard to choose not to go home with your family when you have the opportunity um, but they put their academics first so I'm pretty proud of them for making that decision but other than that we got a couple in Washington one in Oregon one in Kansas and they've all been home and I can actually empathize with the coaches a lot better than I probably could before this. For those that are watching, we obviously were going through a, a men's basketball search during this. So we had one staff member remaining and I did tell all the remaining student athletes to feel free to contact me if anything came up or if they needed anything at any point. And I would drop what I was doing to try to figure out how to help them. Well, they were on spring break and one of our unnamed men's basketball student athletes uh, needed some things from his dorm because, again, he was planning on coming back and was on spring break. So he, he provided a list of, of things that he needed, which were all very uh, important, one of which was a, a PS4 out of his room uh, that he definitely needed to get back shipped home. Uh, so we did get his PS4 shipped back to him, which, but I, I now completely understand where coaches are coming from with some of the things that you deal with on a, on a daily basis. And, and let's, you know, kick it over to, to either Tom or, or Sammy. Obviously, the uh, ability to evaluate now in, in terms of going out to try to, to evaluate any recruits that are out there. So maybe just talk generally about your recruiting approach without getting into to specifics so we can make sure that we don't commit any violations unintentionally on Zoom. 
Um, yeah, no, I can speak just a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit different uh, for us in the spring in the spring sports, at least for for tennis right now. Um, you know, the, the the recruiting beast never ends um, with reference to you know when NLIs are being sent out and when you know on and off campus. We're one of the few sports that do, actually doesn't have like a recruiting period. We're we're on twenty four seven. So with that being said, you know you it changes a little bit because one of our especially at LMU uh, one of one of our positives is, is a big one is actually getting a kid on campus during this time of year because we're playing, we're playing matches. It's spring break, you know, not to say that our weather isn't always great, but it's a huge, huge advantage for us to get a kid and or family on campus during a, during a match, during an event, you know, while basketball is maybe just ending and we're just starting. So we lose that aspect right now. Luckily for us, you know, and I, um, you know, we were fortunate enough to have someone in form right before this whole thing happened. And it's just like we always do. And it was the same. It was the same thing. You know, once we got him on campus, it was great. Couldn't believe it. Family was excited like that. And then we were fortunate enough, this whole thing kind of, you know, hit the airways and everything stopped. Um, so as you, as you mentioned, we don't have any more on campus visits, in person visits and stuff like that. But looking at what we had right before leading into this period to what we have now, it just goes to show how important those visits are and those, uh, you know, person to person contact on campus at a place like LMU is, is huge for us. And maybe uh, in the future is trying to do as tough as it is for us spring sports with like tennis and as much stuff that's going on in this period of time, but really looking to do a lot more and press the envelope of getting a lot more of those visits during this period of time because now we're able to sit and kind of really look at those things. It's, since it's fresh on our mind. Wow. That's, it's even more beneficial than you even maybe would have thought before. Um, but again, I'll say is just this time of period, you know, everyone's going through the same thing. And I think just staying present with that and knowing, knowing that, Hey, we're not the only people. We're not just in this little bubble here and just, you know, trying to utilize those resources, those contacts, um, but I mean, it's, it's a very interesting time and, um, you know, you try to fill the spots and a lot of it is, you know, the unknown, what the NCAA is going to say. So we can sit here and talk about the what ifs until we're blue in the face. Um, really, the, as, as I'm waiting for, the floodgates will either shut or open once we find out which way this is going to go. Yeah, no, you, you bring up an interesting point and, and we are recording this just so everybody is aware on Monday morning, not aware of, of what's going to happen with uh, spring sport eligibility in, in terms of seniors or, or really all class in, in terms of what it does with eligibility. So a lot of unknowns there and, and especially unknowns from a recruiting standpoint that makes it difficult, I think, for any coach. Sammy and Tom touched on, which I think is, is really important. Obviously, the advantage we have at LMU is our campus and, and the beauty of it. And if we can get a kid on an official visit in any sport, we've got a really high opportunity to close for, for any student athlete all over in any sport in, in any part of the country. How, how do you adapt now without having that in your arsenal, uh, at least for the time being? How do you do that when, when campus sells itself so well? Well, that's the biggest thing right now is just building relationships. So then once we can get them on campus, there's a stronger foundation, um, have them commit um, and understand that this is going to be the right fit for them. So we can still communicate with them. But even within our recruiting rules right now, we wouldn't be allowed to go out and watch any type of travel ball stuff. We were, we were allowed to watch them scholastically. So that's not happening right now, but it is a really good opportunity for us to still communicate with them and still build relationships because that's what so much of this business is about. And Charity, thanks, Sammy. Charity, how do you evaluate, because for you, you know, you're, you're, I don't know where your recruiting calendar is, but certainly a live evaluation period is, is coming up and that, that's not going to be there now. So how do you do an evaluation of a potential student athlete when you're not able to see them live. Yeah, um, I mean, we've, we've certainly, you know, we're, we're going off of seeing them last summer, seeing them over the course of this academic year. The, that's our primary uh, group that we're, you know, doing these home visits with. Um, but, um, 
you know, there, we're using Synergy like never before, which is the, the basketball um, website where we can, you know, get on and we can pull up, especially in the transfer world, we can watch these kids and watch all of their clips from the, the year. Um, so that's really, you know, what, what we've been doing to try to do this evaluation. Obviously, talking to coaches um, uh, is huge right now, getting their feedback. You know, and I would go back to one thing that Sammy was talking about, and, and you were talking about the campus. You know, the one thing about LMU in our film and production and all the marketing and Marcom, what they've done, there are some really cool videos out there that show the campus. Uh, you know, there's a drone uh, viewing of all over campus. And we've, we've had some, some pretty good luck with just, you know, it's not the same as being on campus, but it's, it is a wow factor. And, um, you know, that's something that I think, even though we can't get them on campus, we can still make them pretty aware of what our campus is like and what the feel is. No, I, I, I think you're right. I, we, we do have a tremendous film and television school and Marcom has some great resources available. And I know, campus is is furiously working on trying to get a virtual tour of campus up because it is a huge selling point not just for student athletes but for everyone because there is no better place from a campus perspective than LMU and and that is something that we consistently try to sell well I think we're we're almost just about up so I'll, I'll kind of maybe wrap it up and if if anybody has some closing thoughts or or anything that they want to say to anyone who's actually tuning into this, which I have no idea. I mean, it might just be us four who go back and, and five of us that go uh, listen or watch this. So Tom, will, any words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, by show of hands, who's been watched Tiger King? I, I'm like four episodes, I've got like two episodes left. That's what, what I'm talking think? about. I think it's pretty incredible. Have you watched the whole thing yet? Yeah, we knocked it you, out. You watched, okay. Yeah. Well, don't, uh, don't don't I won't spoil, spoil it for me. I won't spoil it. It's pretty good though. It's it's, it's crazy because every character in there seems to be crazier than the next. I mean, that's the part that I, I'm fascinated by. It's character crazy. is is a perfect uh, definition for that. Yeah, it, th that's quite a word of wisdom. <laughs> we give him the floor. And, yes, if anybody's watched Tiger King, I Come love it. That's great. Uh, what about Sammy? You have anything? Anything in closing? I think that's one of Tom's recruiting questions now. That's what he's asking his recruits. That's <laughs> giving him a little bit more info on him. So that's good. Um, no, I just, everyone stay safe. Do, do your part so we can get back at it as soon as we can. And, um, you know, our team's really looking forward to understanding what's going to be next when the NCAA comes together. And then we can start making some different moves from there. But um, I don't know. LME is a great place. So pick us if you're a recruit, no matter what your sport is. Amen. All right, Augustine. I've been uh, reading a little more, and I have a well, a, a great book, *Sapiens*. I don't know if you uh, if you've read it. It's a really good book. It's a little bit about the history of mankind and and how we, you know, and it's kind of crazy that it goes in, into the way that you know that that we have destroyed, um, you know, so many living creatures you know and and now with the virus you know it's so it's kind of interesting you know how how uh, i i guess all the animals are really happy right now because we're leaving them alone you know so, <laughs> so. you're probably you're probably true so if, if it's a, a book about world history we're gonna get through this right you, you've yeah. learned that that's oh, a yeah. good thing yeah 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 of course that's of course we're gonna get through it i mean i I'm very confident. I mean, it's, I think, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like, I, I feel, I see all the news, you know, from Mexico, from Spain, you, you know, I try to like see what's going on over there too. And I mean, it's going to be really bad in the next months and but then things are just going to come back, you know, I, I mean, I feel like that and, and we're going to come back. We're going to be stronger, you know, we're going to know more about, you know, we're going to take care more about little things that we we'll never take care, you know. So I think it's it's probably a good thing that it that it happened, you know, I guess. 
No, it, well, yeah, and it doesn't seem like that now, but I, I do agree with you. I think when we're we're through this, people will have a, a more appreciation for maybe some of the small things that get lost in the daily shuffle, which is which is the good if there is a, a benefit at the end of it, when, whenever that end is. All right, Charity, no pressure, but you're here to close it out. Uh, we're calling I'm, on you. This is like man, ninth inning. I mean, we don't have big. we don't have. Uh, I mean, we should have done that with softball maybe to close it out, but I, this is it. Hey, I, I'm just very um, I think amazing what uh, our country and what this world has done to come together. And I think if there's a lesson to be learned in all of this, that, that is it, that we need each other. We don't have to agree on everything, but, but we need each other and we have to work together. There are so many issues and problems and, and things that come up in this world that if we would just keep this mindset moving forward, that we need each other, that we can help each other, and that um, people are what matter and relationships matter. And so it's, it's been really cool to see the LMU community come together and uh, as head coaches, just sharing ideas, uh, supporting each other, being there for each other. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful to be here and yet also very, very hopeful for you know, the direction that our, our country and hopefully this world takes after this.